Welcome flip clock fans. Changes in a federal regulation may result in flip clocks in the United States not keeping perfect time. How in the world could a federal regulation change cause your flip clocks to run fast or slow? Thus find out. This is all about our electrical grid in a process called time error correction. Here's some background. The electricity that powers most flip clocks as we all know is alternating current. In contrast to direct current, which flows in one direction, alternating current flow changes direction constantly. In the United States and Canada, the rate of direction change is 60 times per second. That is referred to as a frequency of 60 Hz. Why does frequency matter? The frequency of the electrical grid is basically determined by the speed of rotation of the electrical generators creating our electricity. The operators of the electrical grid monitor frequency closely since there are important reasons the electrical grid must be maintained at or near the same frequency throughout. But more importantly, frequency matters to flip clock users and collectors because vintage flip clocks that run on household current use synchronous motors. The speed of the synchronous motor is based entirely on the frequency of the electricity. Simply put, your flip clock depends upon the frequency of the electrical grid to keep proper time. So when did using the electrical grid for timekeeping come about? And just what exactly is this time error correction? In 1915, Henry Warren invented the Telecron electric clock. This was the first clock with a self-starting synchronous electric motor. Warren was instrumental in getting the power companies to work harder to stabilize the frequency of the electrical system so that his clocks would keep time well. The story is that he gave some of his clocks to the electrical companies and sold them on the idea that people would take to this new electricity thing if they brought his clocks and could depend upon the electrical grid. Interestingly, what Warren encouraged the electrical companies to do, that is maintain a more stable frequency to help him sell clocks, helped the various companies to be able to merge their electrical systems and ultimately allowed for the development of our current electrical grid. You see, if the frequencies of the three U.S. grids, Eastern, Western, and Texas, do not match, they cannot safely merge their systems when needed. But getting back to timekeeping, the concept of time error correction came into play as timekeeping devices with synchronous motors became more common. The electric network operators began monitoring fluctuations in current frequency and keeping track of the average frequency throughout the day. You see, the frequency of household current in the United States has never been and still to this day is not a perfect 60 Hz. There are changes throughout the day based on power consumption and other factors. Initially, primarily as a customer service, the power company started keeping track of these changes, then on a regular basis as needed made corrections by either purposefully increasing or decreasing the frequency to help the timekeeping devices catch up or slow down to the actual time. This is what is called time error correction. Regularly performing time error correction became the normal protocol eventually, but it was not actually mandated by the U.S. Federal Energy Regulatory Commission until 2009. These standards, among other things, detailed exactly how much frequency variation or time loss in synchronous timekeeping devices would trigger the need to implement time error correction. The correction is performed by making changes in the frequency of only 0.02 Hz. That is, output during a period of time error correction would be changed from 60 Hz to 60.02 Hz if the clocks were running slow or to 59.98 Hz if the clocks were running fast. So what's changed? Without much fanfare, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission eliminated the requirement for time error correction in 2017. No longer do grid operators have to try to catch up synchronous clocks attached to the electrical system. Now how much impact this will have on flip clocks used as actual timekeeping devices remains to be seen. There are a couple of things to consider. First, the operators of the grid have no desire or intention to squirrel up your flip clock. It actually serves their purposes to keep the grid stable at 60 Hz. Also, technology is improving and there is less deviation from the 60 Hz average than in the past. In fact, a study of time error correction during 2014 showed that for the three U.S. power grid interconnections, the time was corrected from about two to eight minutes. That is, clocks would have run from about two to eight minutes slow over the course of 2014 if the corrections had not been performed that year. If you consider that we change our clocks twice a year for daylight savings time, when we would naturally adjust the clocks to the correct time, 
Quite honestly, no one is likely to notice their clocks being wildly off from the correct time. So now you know. While time error corrections are no longer mandated, it's not likely to mess up your favored flip clock that much. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.